podcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Welcome to today's Energy Central webcast entitled, Leveraging Beyond the Meter Programs to Boost Revenue and Customer Satisfaction. A few housekeeping notes we'd like to mention for best results in viewing this presentation. We recommend using a wired high-speed internet connection as wireless connections can be unpredictable. If you cannot get adequate sound from your computer speakers, you may dial into the audio portion using the telephone number listed in the right-hand panel of your interface under the audio section. We invite you to submit your questions at any time using the interface on your screen. I'm happy to turn the floor over to our first speaker, Jamie Wimberly, CEO of DEFG. Jamie, welcome to the event. You have the floor. Thanks, BJ. I wanna welcome everyone today. I'm excited about this. Um, you know, this this uh, is a webcast to talk about customer transformation, um, and DFG has been a research and advisory firm focused on customer in the utility space for uh, now 17 years, so a long time. Um, we have 50 plus utility clients, which easily serve over 100 million customers. Um, if we can go to the next slide, please. So one of the things that DFG does, uh, we do a lot of customer research. Uh, we do surveys, we do focus groups, we do long interviews. I mean, pretty much any kind of uh, customer research that you can think of, we do. Um, and so one of the things that we have been tracking um, are all these drivers transforming the utility customer service model. Um, and some of those, these are all, again, findings from our research. Um, but, you know, CSAT isn't necessarily um, customer loyalty. Um, in fact, CSAT can hide more than it reveals. So, you, you know, we look at the metrics that we're using. Um, we're, we're looking at this large and growing generational gap. Um, it's probably one of the most significant things that we see pop up in our, in our survey findings. Um, you know, have come to the inclusion that there is no average customer. Um, some Folks have done a fair bit of work around segmentation um, and have developed customer personas, but even so, um, there needs to be a lot more work around segmentation. And you know, now we have COVID, and and that impact has been very uneven. Um, we are predicting that um, it is going to have uh, a pretty severe impact on vulnerable customers and small commercial and others. But again, that impact is very uneven. So there's a lot of drivers transforming the utility customer service model. Um, and it's interesting, sometimes when we talk about transformation, the industry has one view of transformation, which is again, you know, how are we going to get those future earnings in the door? And they're, so they're looking at uh, res resiliency, so spending money on reliability, they're looking at um, renewable energy, uh, they're looking at smart cities. Um, so they're looking at, you know, big spend kind of items. Um, but oftentimes what they're not necessarily uh, looking at is what that customer perception of value is. Um, moreover, um, you know, really what the customers, you know, where their head's at. And so even just taking one thing, um, you know, there's a presumption in the utility space that, you know, customers want a high degree of, uh, of uh, reliability. So, you know, six nines, what have you. Um, but when you really talk about uh, to most customers, um, you know, they have a more nuanced view and especially if they're younger and they're out and about and they're mobile, even even today with COVID, um, it becomes more situational. I mean, so there's a lot of things to learn from doing all this customer research. But again, um, it's very clear to us that, you know, after, you know, watching this for a long time, that we've been on this long tail of transformation. And now because of COVID, that th those forces, those these trends that I've been referencing um, are accelerating. So if we can go to the next slide, please. So one of the things that's interesting um, and very appropriate for today's um, presentation uh, is around the personalization of customer service. Um, you know, when we ask, um, you know, just real softball type survey questions um, about, you know, are you getting the right information, the right amount of information from your utility? Usually, again, the utilities are doing fairly well in terms of CSAT around just basic, you know, block and tackling around on customer service. Um, although when you start digging a little bit further, um, 
it, it is, it's pretty clear that, you know, there are significant segments of, of customers that would prefer a little bit more service or different kinds of service. Um, I think bill pay is a good example of that because bill pay, quite frankly, in a commodity market is, is customer service or, uh, for, for many. Um, but, you know, one of the things I was so pleased that uh, to have the opportunity to um, do this presentation with uh, Rob and American Water uh, Homeowner Services and Updater is because, um, I, you know, again, one of the things that we've looked at is, you know, that new account set up and all those opportunities to really learn something around the customer preferences. Um, and again, that would kind of set the tone of their customer journey with you for a long time. Um, again, there's a, with the personalization of customer service, you know, one of the biggest divides that we see easily uh, is a generational one. Um, you know, I don't think it really is too far of a stretch that most of, you know, the systems, the processes and so on, um, were developed, uh, you know, decades ago in many cases, which makes them perfectly aligned to senior citizens and what they, they need, um, not so much for younger people. If we can go to the next slide, please. Um, so, you, you know, what's interesting, there, this opportunity uh, is also a challenge. Um, the opportunity, again, to, to really think through your customer strategy, what that customer service model looks like, you know, what those needs are, um, and, and, and if you get it right, um, I think that there's a lot of opportunity both for, for customer loyalty uh, above and beyond CSAT, but also revenue opportunity. But if you don't, what is already happening is that these fault lines have appeared and we've identified them in our research. But certainly, um, you know, when we think of an exit, we think of, you know, in a competitive marketplace that, you know, somebody switches from one company to the next. But in our case, in our in, in mostly with monopolies, um, there are exits. And so every time a customer uses less of your product through energy efficiency, that's partly an exit. Or when other third parties come in, like in California, there's a lot of community agri energy aggregators in other parts of the country, uh, you know, that can be an exit. Um, when when basically customers decide just to, to self-generate self or, you know, install renewable energy or other things um, on their side of the meter, uh, again, that's a hedge and or a potential uh, partial exit. Um, and quite frankly, every um, year we do this annual uh, survey of the customer uh, or say to the customer in the utility sector. And the last question we've asked and for a long time, so it's a tracking question, you know, you know, if you could, would you leave the utility for any reason now uh, and, and consistently um, you know, 25% of the people uh, that, we, that we surveyed uh, said they would. Um, so again, there's a lot to be um, really optimistic about in terms of like, you know, what, what could happen, what if, um, but also there's some challenges here. So uh, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rob with uh, American Water Homeowner Services. Great. Thank you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we've got a record crowd here today, so we really appreciate you folks joining us. We've got an action-packed agenda, um, a lot of data to cover, so we're going to move very quickly, but uh, as PJ said, you will have uh, copies of the deck and uh, feel free to follow up with any of us after the event. So, um, and, and if you don't know the DEFG group and Jamie Wimberly, please get to know them. They are the voice of the utility and the utility customer uh, throughout North America, and they've done some really great work. So uh, definitely get to know that, uh, that group. So we find ourselves in a perfect storm, if you will, um, I mean, who would have who would have seen any of this coming in early early part of this year, and just all the things that have changed, and as quickly as they've changed. So multiple problems have all converged, but the good news is we've got many solutions as well. And I think if anything, the COVID pandemic has really you know forced us to look at kind of new problems in in new ways, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But basically, you know, to no surprise, we're dealing with historic levels of debt. Uh, customer debt is accruing rapidly due to unemployment. Uh, I mean, who would have thought 30 million unemployed? Utility debt, debt was already significant and growing, but now with all of these uh, debt moratorium, disconnect moratoriums, um, that really just exacerbates the problem significantly. And, and to no surprise, it's our low-income customers that have really been hit the hardest. Next slide, please. 
So I, I love the definition of insanity. I've used it uh, in my life and in my business life for many years. I assume it comes from Albert Einstein, but it's really helped me, and I thought it was very uh, appropriate for the, the, the basis of this webcast. But just that definition of insanity, of doing the same things over and over and over again, but this go around expecting things to be different, expecting different results. And we can't fight new problems with the same old solutions. And obviously, utilities, uh, as great as they are, and I've been involved with utilities now for 20 plus years, um, you know, we don't sit on the leading edge of innovation. And I think through the pandemic, this has really forced us to look at a new set of problems and hopefully with a new set of solutions as well. And that's what we're hoping to do today, to just challenge you to think a little differently and outside of the box. So essentially what we're dealing with is, is the ability to find additional revenue, non-usage revenue, to help pay for programs that could really bring a lot of value and benefit to not only your customers, but to the utility itself. And the bottom line is imagine having millions of dollars at your avail <laughs> that could be used to, to fund a variety of different programs, especially in and around low income. And keep in mind that behind the meter or beyond the meter programs are not new at all. They've actually been around for over 100 plus years. So um, Dennis, if you will, tell us a little bit about what the beyond the meter program is and does. Sure, thanks Rob, and I appreciate that setup. So what do we mean by beyond the meter programs? Well, it's really descriptive in its title, but it's beyond the core service energy and service delivery programs that most utilities provide today. So you provide energy to your consumers, you bill and collect, and the, that usage stops at the meter. What we're talking about are programs and services generally customer facing that solve customer issues that are inside a consumer's home. If we solve these issues, they can bring value add to your customer and revenue to your bottom line. Next slide, please. So in order to be successful here, you need to be a provider of solutions. As Jamie mentioned, in this transformative environment, it's changing the way people look at utilities. We used to say you'd have the right to win as a utility, but as expectations change, now it, it becomes an obligation of utilities to serve customers how they need to be served. And a after the meter program is a natural and logical extension of your relationship with the consumer. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and you know, it just boils down to meeting customers where they are. Now, obviously, utilities, we're, we're not the, you know, we don't have to be the innovators of the world, but um, just thought this would be fun to just look at some quick examples um, that, that will really, you know, make us realize that innovations make life better. And the old adage, you know, lead, follow, or get out of the way. We have an opportunity to do things, especially with these beyond the meter programs, that can really help us to meet customers where they are, especially at their time of need. So, you know, just the advent of, of you know, newer faucet technologies where now with one hand and one valve, you can control water pressure and get the right amount of hot and cold water, you know, together as opposed to trying to do that with two hands. And just a simple idea that really is a life changer or how long did it take us to figure out that wheels on a suitcase really make travel a lot easier as we go in and out of uh, uh, airports, et cetera, or how Uber has, you know, the advent of ride sharing has really changed the way we can um, uh, can transport and, and for delivery services. And, and it really shows how broken the taxi cab services were to begin with. And then someone like an Amazon, I mean, what, who would have thought that this online bookstore would really revolutionize the way we shop, uh, especially during a pandemic? And I think most importantly, when I think of Amazon, for all the purchases that all of us have made on Amazon, when was the last time you really spoke to an Amazon representative? For me and our family, never. The, 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 the system was designed to be fully digital and doesn't require interfacing with, with live agents. So let's take a look at kind of other ways to, to deal with this. So Jenna, it's to you. Hi everyone, Jenna from Updater here. Um, I'm a marketer, a marketer at heart, so I'm going to approach this from a marketing perspective. And the, the most successful products and services solve very simple problems. And you can see a few examples of those here on the screen. Right? What if there was a simple way to hail a cab? I think we know what technology company or solution 
talking about, right? Or what if there was a simple way to host a video meeting during a pandemic or browse homes without a real estate agent, right? These sound like very simple problems. And if you, as Rob was talking about, meet customers where they are, you're going to be very successful. Um, the founder of Instagram actually has one of my favorite quotes of all times has said this, which is great products sell themselves. And he's saying, I think he's right. You can ask, you know, any of the founders of the companies that we reference here on the screen, you instantly know who we're talking about. If you don't, we're talking about Uber, Zillow, and Zoom. And taking something complicated and making it simple is one of the most powerful ways to truly win over your customers and a great way to scale a business. And again, you can ask Zillow, Zoom, or Uber about that. But let's talk more about our own industry, right? So utilities, in my opinion, are in a unique position to handle your customer's home needs. So let's apply this same sort of methodology to what's on the screen. What if there was a simple way to blank, reduce my carbon footprint, or sign up for electric and internet at the same time, or fix my appliances when they break? all of the above, right? You're in that unique position to actually handle those. And if you can provide a solution to these simple problems, your customers will absolutely thank you for it. Now, if we shift gear slightly, we identified a few simple problems. You know, we just gave examples of other companies and the solutions they solve for these simple problems, but we have some of our own here in our industry. So we as a group have identified a few of those problems and of course have suggested solutions for each. So Rob, would you like to take it away and share some of our problems? Yeah, absolutely. And I thought Jamie made a great point yesterday when we were doing a practice run that, you know, the, the, the function of our homes, our residences have changed significantly over the last, uh, you know, six months. I mean, who would have thought that, that the vast amount of, of, you know, all of us in a variety of industries would be working from home or schooling our children from home or providing elderly care at home or child care at home. And how now, you know, anywhere from 10 to 30 different Internet of Thing devices are also connected. And it's the electric companies and the gas companies and the water companies that power our homes. And, and so it, there really is a tremendous opportunity. So quickly, it, it, you know, it, there, to no surprise, Americans are staying in their homes longer. Ten, year, ten years was the average back in 2008. Now it's up to 13 years. So the, the, the time we spend in our homes as far as ownership, has gone up. And then also just the age of the home. Uh, average age of a home today in North America is 37 years. So as we go to the next slide, the, the other issue aside from aging infrastructure is the fact that not everybody can pick up the tab for repairs, even if it's just a couple of hundred dollars. But it's a lot of good banking information out there that we'll talk about in terms of numbers, as you see on your screen, that anywhere from 32 to 58 percent of, of Americans don't have $1,000 on hand to pay for an expensive repair, especially with so many people unemployed at this point. Um, and, and if you think about it, that's what insurance is really all about, you know, providing protection against expensive repairs, whether it's medical purposes or, or automotive or home. And, and that's really what we'll talk about shortly in terms of home, uh, home warranty. But let's look at uh, additional problems as well. Yeah, thanks, Rob. So in case for those of you who are on the line who aren't familiar with Updater, um, we're the nation's number one moving app. So we're gonna talk a little bit about moving today as well. Um, we know moving, mover behavior, mover needs, mover timelines, mover marketing, mover trends, et cetera. So we're gonna share a little bit of the stats and learnings with you. So problem number three that we identified here is that moving is overwhelming. If you've moved, you know what I'm talking about. This isn't rocket science. It's just really overwhelming. It's complicated and it's a, it's a pretty interconnected web of all the services and industries that you see here on the left side of the screen coming together. And moving is really the only time when you, all of us as consumers who've moved in the past, you have to contact dozens of businesses all at one time. And it's definitely can be a pain in the butt, overwhelming and a big challenge. So. What we've done is what you see here on the right here are the top five stressors for movers. I want to focus on the owner side really quickly and just examine their stressors here. So out of all of our movers that we've surveyed, this is from internal study here, homeowners are most worried about number one, TV and internet plans, number two, utility setup. 
And you can see on the renter side here, utility setup is the, and TV and internet plans are exactly the same. So number one and two focuses are your essential utilities, right? Water, electric, gas, cable, and internet. And if you help with number two already, you're already helping your customers with number two, why can't you help with number one or perhaps number three? And we're going to cover some of these later, but overall problem here is that moving is and can be very overwhelming, right? So the next problem is that, you know, feeling settled doesn't happen overnight, but all of us as consumers, as movers want it to, right? You want to feel settled. We're, we're all probably all too familiar with having cardboard boxes linger in the living room for days. And that feeling of, you know, getting settled in quickly is really important to most homeowners. And in this study that you see here on the screen, we asked movers what their guiding principle for their move was. And you can see that 70% said that settling in quickly was most important. And they even added comments like, you know, I care most about things that make my adjustment easier, or I just have to make sure that I can live, I need my electricity, right? And getting back to normal is incredibly important to them. So Rob, let's, uh, let's just recap these problems before we tackle some solutions. Sure, absolutely. So basically, in a nutshell, there are four different problems that we want to kind of zero in on. One, that homeowners and homes are, are aging. Um, at the same time, many people don't have money for those repairs. Uh, thirdly, that moving is overwhelming and, and very stressful, as Jenna pointed out. And then fourthly, People want to settle in quickly. Um, I was just thinking of an example earlier today when I was uh, preparing. And it's, if, if I were driving around in a car running errands and all of a sudden I ran out of gas, it's not Shell or BP's fault nor their responsibility that, that I ran out of fuel. That was, you know, my, my car, my responsibility. They're not at fault. They're not responsible. But what a great time for them to step up, step in, and and provide some services again meeting customers when where they are you know at that time of need um, so just keep that in mind we've t talked about problems now in just a second we're going to set up uh, kind of rearrange the stage and talk about solutions but one thing i wanted to get out of the way quickly in the next slide is just that the kind of the conundrum between building versus buy we live in a software as a service model today with all of the different technologies that are out there there are obviously advantages to both, um, but I think, and it, to me, clearly, a software as a service model, such as what we're presenting today, makes a lot of sense. Um, utilities have enough to do. Uh, they don't need to just take on additional, uh, you know, programs that might not necessarily be within their wheelhouse. So one thing to think about, and it was a, a, the CIO at Austin Energy that, that said this at a presentation that really, I thought, really nailed nailed it completely in that is if, if it takes you 12 months to build something then you probably should outsource it uh, secondly that outsourcing allows you to easily pilot programs with little to zero investment uh, outsourcing is always easier faster and cheaper than it is to build something internally and you can always take an outsource program and bring it in-house down the road so it makes it very easy to pilot or test drive the program and then most importantly is that if you do choose to build a, a, a beyond the meter type program and it is successful are you really prepared to manage it i've talked to numerous utilities here just recently that in each instance have built a very successful program but now realize that as it's grown and expanded it's just become a lot more uh, than they had ever expected in terms of managing it. So basically what we want to provide are just simple solutions, very highly proven programs that you can adopt um, and, and not really put you know, much pressure on your internal resources and not have to invest you know, real money in, in terms of the technology of the program itself. So let's just talk briefly about home warranty programs and a little bit about who we are, where we come from, and let me just kind of present in general, very high terms, um, uh, warranty programs as a whole. So first of all, and, and, and most importantly, we're a utility. Uh, we've been around for over 100 years. We deal with the same issues that every one of you on this call deals with from a utility perspective, you know, regulatory uh, commissions, uh, et cetera. Uh, as, as an organization, we're just under 7,000 full-time employees uh, providing water and wastewater services to over 15 million people across uh, 46 states. 
as American Water Homeowner Services, 28 years within the home warranty industry as a whole, all of which each year we have been under the ownership of a utility. Um, so again, we understand your problems because we face the same problems that you do. Uh, in terms of kind of some of the sort of the, the by the numbers, um, we have over 30, 30 plus customers, utilities and municipalities. But we currently have just right at 3 million protection plans from coast to coast. We average about 548 home repairs on a daily basis, and we average a team of just over 2,400 service companies, um, which is a lot of moving parts. And it's taken us a long time to really get that down to a science, and, and that we have. So uh, these would be electricians, uh, plumbers, uh, a variety of different uh, gas organizations, HVAC services as well. The next slide will just give you a quick glimpse of some of the customers that are using our services, large, medium, and small, electric, gas, and water. So as we go to the next slide, I thought this was just kind of timely because at our house, um, our freezer stopped freezing. It turned out that it was a $21.60 part. Uh, it was a thermosistor sensor, whatever that is, but the actual bill came to about $230. Uh, for a $21 part. And unfortunately, our appliances um, have gotten very sophisticated and very expensive at the same time. So just listed here, just across the nation, and there are ranges depending on what part of the, the, the country you're from. Um, but to replace, or I'm sorry, to repair an appliance is not inexpensive. And obviously, we all know it's not a matter of if, but a matter of when it's going to require replacement. Um, I just added a quick picture of a uh, one of the trucks that of the plumber that we use in our local community, and I always kid them because their name is Affordable Plumbing and Repair. And I got to tell you, it's gotten to a point where it's not always affordable. As we go to the next slide, so for 28 years, we've been providing a suite of about 36 different warranty programs. These are what we would call conventional or standard warranty type programs. Coming up in about 10 minutes, we're going to look at some innovations that really add uh, to this this offering. But for the sake of just conventional warranties, uh, about 36 different programs, again, water, gas, and electric. And then what I also wanted to do was just to cover just some of the misconceptions about warranty programs as a whole. Obviously, different companies different uh, and can differ greatly. But let's just focus in on our organization and our 28 years of experience. So the first misconception is that home warranty programs negatively impact CSAT. It's really not the case at all, although our numbers, when we use Russell Research from Philadelphia uh, to, to, to do customer SAT surveys for us on an annual basis, let's just use for the sake of argument J.D. Power. And in a recent publication a couple of months back, they were showing that these value-added services can improve power quality and reliability index points by 70. So that's a 7% lift based on their scoring from 0 to 1,000. The second misconception is that home warranty programs offer little or no value to homeowners. Well, we would hardly, highly disagree with that in that just this year, the first half of 2020, which has been an interesting year, I think we can all agree, we've helped over 100,000 customers avoid almost 45 million in unexpected uh, repairs just during the first half of the year. So we do feel that our programs offer a significant amount of value. The next mis misconception is that home warranty programs have low adoption rates. And again, we highly disagree. Um, our ranges are typically from 12% to 42% as far as a participation or penetration rate on average per customer. If you were to combine all of our utilities together, uh, it comes out to about 26.5%. So imagine a product or a service that you could provide to your customers that would have a, a participation rate of, of over 25%. And as we see in a little bit as we get to the more of the innovative products, we can certainly make that number go up. Another misconception is that home warranty claims never get paid. Well, keep in mind that we're a utility. Our reputation is far more important than our revenue stream is. Uh, last year alone, our pay claim rate averaged 95%. So granted, there are some creative claims out there, and, and some of them are not legitimate, and that's about 5%. But ultimately, we're going to do what's best for you, the utility, and what's best for your customer. And then finally, that home warranty contracts have a very low stick rate. Well, now there are tenant issues where it will move more frequently than homeowners, and there's some transfers where they'll, a customer of yours will move from one side of the city to the other. But easily, at a minimum, four to five years per product is what we're finding for retention rates. 
So we've talked about the impact of customer sat. Now let's just talk briefly about uh, the impact of revenue. So I was looking over the uh, attendee list, and we had, I think, what, 245 registrations for this uh, webcast. So we're delighted that you're all here. Um, I was just, just did some quick math. About 50 meters is the smallest utility dialed in today, all the way up to about 5 million. So a, a broad spread. But with that in mind, with just a 15% participation rate, and if you were at, let's say, 750,000 meters, this program would provide about 2.3 million per year in ongoing revenue share. Now, again, I said 26.5% was our average. But even if you're getting, you know, half the value of the program, you're still earning about $2.3 million a year, and that doesn't include signing bonuses and other accelerators. And we'll talk about some marketing ideas also coming up. So my question to you would be, what could you and your organization do with this kind of money per year, and how could you spread that love uh, on an ongoing basis uh, to a variety of programs and people, especially low income, that could really use a little hand right now. The other thing that we want to do, and to the next slide, Jenna, please, is that we have ways of improving the overall customer service. Just things like being able to schedule 24 by 7. So if you need a plumber or an HVAC technician or an electrician, pick up the phone and we'll, we'll answer that call 24 by 7. The ability to schedule digitally or to be able to track your plumber and see a picture of that individual before they get to the house and know if you've got enough time to run to the grocery store and pick up milk or to pick up a child from daycare. Um, we won't talk about it in detail, but the way we provide feedback on an ongoing basis. So then we start to kind of wrap up. Let's go to the next slide that for utilities, the benefits are going to be twofold primarily. One, increasing CSAT, anywhere from 7 to 18 percent. Um, secondly, the ability to generate significant ongoing revenue for the life of the partnership, providing a value-added, non-usage you know, type service that really ties very nicely in with the products and services you already offer. We find that, that home warranties really set the foundation for all things beyond the meter. And we can talk about that more offline, but I'd love to, love to have that discussion with you. Secondly, or thirdly, it just provides, uh, ensures that your service lines and the homeowner appliances are properly maintained and they're safe. Um, for the homeowner itself, it provides budget protection uh, for that uh, for that individual, not only you know pr protecting the appliance, but but preventing those high costly repairs. Provides the convenience of 24 by 7 uh, uh, ability to contact us uh, and not have to fish around to try to figure out who can I call, who can get here the quickest, who's the best plumber, the best electrician. Um, enhances overall customer experience, uh, keeps the appliances operating efficiently and safely. So, for example, our gas line program offers an, uh, an, an in-home gas inspection uh, with a sniffer uh, one time per year just to ensure that there are no gas leaks. A variety of different programs for both homeowners and tenants, and then obviously access to highly vetted local technicians. In the next slide, just very quickly, wanted to talk about there are a variety of different ways of marketing our programs as well as any Beyond the Meter program. Most importantly, things like branding, um, the ability to link your name to the program itself obviously has a huge degree of success. Um, on bill, uh, the convenience of uh, you know, customer billing, adding these products and services to the bill. And then most importantly, the transfer, or what we would call the move call. So starting service or transferring service, this is a huge opportunity, the ability to monetize the move call that most utilities just really don't understand the, the power and the capabilities. And I just wanted to give you real quickly a, an example of that. Just recently, about three weeks ago, we started taking the move call for Centerpoint Energy for their Vectran Energy Territory, which covers Ohio and uh, Indiana. Um, this would result for us at about 200,000 move calls per year. And already, just in the third week, we're now seeing about a 20 to 25 percent lift of their customers signing up for our warranty programs. Again, it's just such a, a unique opportunity where customers are looking for help, products and services. They're, they're apt to make decisions at that point of time, and, and they, they, they trust their utilities. In fact, they've even been signing up for three to even five, upwards of five different coverages in that same transaction. So the move call is incredibly important. And then finally, just kind of warranty programs in review. Next slide. Um, improving customer satisfaction, generating revenue, and just providing a customer convenience, meeting customers where they are during their time of move. 
Next slide. Rob, that was great. I really appreciate that overview. As the listeners can clearly hear, there is certainly uh, wonderful overlapping solutions between a home warranty program and a mover concierge program. But mover concierge programs and expectations certainly have changed. So it's an absolute customer convenience. It's a solution you can provide to your consumers that will save them both time and money. And maybe more importantly, as Rob alluded to, customers are four times more likely to adopt one of your programs while they're moving. Next slide, please. Jenna covered this, but in addition to the incremental activity that the consumers have to solve while they're moving in, it's also important to note that every move is different. If you're a renter move is going to be different than a homeowner move. If you're moving across town, it's gonna to be different than if you move across the country. Utilities with the right partner are uniquely positioned to solve this issue. So the movers opportunity, it's really being able to meet customer needs during the time when they're moving in and then provide a platform for them to uh, adopt all their home services programs, both for what they need when they move in that we covered on our hit list, if you will, and the priority as well adoption, as well as adoption of your programs. Notice we have yet to really hit on the revenue element because if we as solutioners solve these problems, the revenue will follow. Hey Dennis, this, this is Jamie. Um, can I can I jump in here for a second? Please do. Yeah, you know, I, I think there's such an opportunity for utilities uh, to get this piece right. Um, basically, uh, you you got uh, about 60 days uh, of that customer being very engaged uh, around new services, um, open to to new ideas, um, and I've I've just seen so many of our utility clients. Um, you know, take a different approach to to new account setup, um, and and yet I again I think it's such an opportunity to get you know uh, to really get the right data to to start that relationship off the right way um, to really get to know that customer um, and and again once that 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 is the customer journey the beginning of it so um, I'm glad that you're pointing this out because again when our own research is backing up exactly what you're saying. Thanks, Jamie. And what we'd like the opportunity to do is tell you how we're thinking about it differently, not just how we're thinking about it, but how we have actually deployed and solutioned a movers concierge program different than it's historically been done in the past. All right, I'll jump in here. Thanks, guys. So we know that concierge par programs have been a work around for a while, right? But what we also know is that this talk today is about innovation and transformation and revenue. And historically, these programs have tried to generate money off of movers. Why? Because it's easy, right? You know, Jamie was just saying you have a 60-day window. I know for a fact we have lots of stats. Actually, we have a post on energycentral.com detailing mover spending patterns and how things shift. Obviously, Dennis mentioned movers are four times more likely to try a new product or service. Their loyalties are vulnerable. 80% of them are making long-term spending decisions within six weeks of the move. And a lot of those spending decisions are on kind of like lifetime value products, like what you offer, your programs, internet, home security, appliances, et cetera. Um, so it's relatively easy because this is a, a time of like hyper consumption, right? So we just spoke about how, you know, brand loyalties have become vulnerable. It's very easy, but that's not really what we want to talk about today, right? So we're talking about adding value, solving the simple problems, right? And as Dennis mentioned earlier, being a provider of solutions, right? So this slide is a little goofy and call me corny, but I'd like to introduce Updater as a solution, which is not your grandfather's call transfer program. So Updater is the nation's leading moving concierge app. I mentioned that earlier. We launched in 2011, and today we're the leader in relocation technology. So we're going to camp out on this slide for a little while here, so just bear with me. But what you see here in the center of your screen is our app dashboard. And this app is used by consumers, right? People who are moving to tackle all of their most important moving-related tasks. So we help people purchase television and internet plans, book professional moving companies, update their address everywhere, right? You have to make sure you get your packages, uh, transfer insurance policies, and pretty much everything in between. 
And the easiest way to think about updater is like a turbo tax, but for moving. So in orange here, what you see, we have three different groupings in blue, orange, and green here. We're gonna walk through each one. We're gonna start with orange. You see that movers leverage our app and achieve value from it in different ways. So imagine having an app or TurboTax to help you move, right? So you're able to save time and headaches by accomplishing everything in one place. They're able to make smart decisions by being able to compare products and services, apples to apples, side by side, really powerful. Our platform is also completely unbiased. So we don't have a vested interest in what movers book or order, as long as we help them accomplish what they need. And last but certainly not least, our platform is curated to each and every mover. And I like to joke that moves are like snowflakes. Every single move is unique. You know, a move from New York City to Seattle would be different from a move within the same town in Nebraska, for example. Yet every move still has the basic the exact same basic needs. So what we've done is built a platform that has scale to handle the entire country and every single move nationwide, but also is personalized and curated to each unique individual move. We have special features for people moving with pets or with children or renters versus owners or local moves versus long distance moves and, and so on. So enough about Updater, but let's talk about how you can leverage what we've built to drive revenue and increase customer satisfaction. That's what we're here for, right? So let's talk about the blue and the green circles on this diagram. That's where you come in. So on the blue side on the left, your team talks to movers every single day. And if you're at all interested in building a true digital mover journey, not just landing pages, then this is for you you can offer our app to your customers in a turnkey fashion. We'll help you customize it, add your branding to it, add your own programs in, add your warranty partnership with American Water perhaps, and more. Um, and you can configure Updater for your own customers. Why would you wanna do such a thing? Well, because all moves are snowflakes, as I mentioned. So by doing this, you will actually improve your service level, increase customer satisfaction, and personalize a mover experience just for your own customers. And as a result, you will also increase revenue. As I mentioned, we can help you sell your own products and services and drive enrollment for your own programs within Updater. So this is essentially you know, a white labeled mover journey that is awesome. So let's flip over to the green side of this diagram. Millions of movers nationwide use our app regularly. We currently process over 25% of all U.S. household moves, and movers are invited into Updater approximately 30 to 60 days in advance of their move to start preparing and getting organized. And if you can remember back to one of our previous slides, we shared that the top stressors and the number two stressor for both renters and homeowners was utility setup. You need this done in order to live, right? You need your electricity. And this may sound a bit futuristic, but imagine a world where you could start, stop, or transfer your electric, gas, water, cable, internet, everything all in one place, all in one place, right? And we're working to enhance the digital turn-on process for all home services. So what we want to do is A, provide immense value to movers in the click of a button, and B, help you save time and money on your mover phone calls. Additionally, by including your programs, products, and services within our platform, like actually inside the app, we can help you increase digital enrollment through a completely new sales channel, the updater movers that are already within our platform. So as Jamie and Rob both mentioned earlier, right, now is the time to think a little bit differently and take some action. So while we camped on the slide for quite some time, as I mentioned, I believe it's really valuable to demonstrate the fact that there are more effective digital solutions than landing pages, and there are more like very valuable ways to solve mover problems in addition to a call transfer solution. And there's innovation in the mover space that's truly worth paying attention to. Now to that end, if digital is tough to get through the ranks at your company, we also offer ways to work together over the phone if you'd like to launch a new or enhance your current call transfer program. We offer a high volume home service call center that can A, sell ancillary products and services, B, solve those mover stressors, but over the phone, and C, enroll customers in, like I said, the programs that you care most about. Um, Updater actually acquired a company named Bridgevine at the end of 2019, and Bridgevine's capabilities 
in this space are truly paramount. Uh, there aren't many call centers that can say that they had zero outages during the COVID switch from the office to a work from home scenario. And our call solution includes everything from machine learning to speech analytics and everything in between. So if you're going to have a call program, you definitely want it to be the best in class technology that's powering it. So what's really great about this is that anything we can do over the phone, we can also do with digital excellence and truly unprecedented tech infrastructure. And anything that we can do digitally, we can also do over the phone. So as I mentioned, you know, we take an unbiased approach so that you can tell, sell more of, of what you really truly care most about. So that was a, you know, kind of like a quick overview of Updater and how we can solve the different problems that your customers are facing. In addition to that, as we said, you guys are in a very, very unique position to be able to solve the num at least the number one and two stressors on the list and Updater can help you solve three, four and five all at one place, right? We want to be a provider of solutions as companies. We want our consumers are expecting more of us, so therefore we need to provide those solutions. So I wanna cut a little bit now to the fun stuff, uh, just like Rob shared some of his revenue projections. I'm gonna pass it to Dennis to share some of ours. Right, so so thanks, Jenna. So what, what could this mean to you? What could this mean to us? What could it mean to the marketplace, right? If we focus on solving really simple issues in an elegant way, and give the consumers one place to stop, the revenue will follow. Now, every marketplace is slightly different in its mobility rates and participation rates will change by individual regulatory markets, but revenues in this space are real. If you can get participation rates in the average of 70% and you have, a, you have 100,000 or so movers in your space, you can get upwards of three quarters of a million dollars of incremental revenue. Now, for you accountants in the room, this revenue is generated by heavy lift from Updater. So therefore, almost all of these revenues drop right to your margin line or right to your bottom line. So to restate what Rob said, what could you do with three quarters of a million? How could that help your budget? How could that help advance your programs within your utility? Next slide. And guys, this isn't just theory. We have developed and deployed this program with some of the top-based clients in the marketplace. Some of the top five energy companies in the country are using, deploying these solutions that we've outlined to you. And it means real things. It means call center savings in terms of avoided cost, call costs. It means incremental revenue as a result of other products and services sold. It means adoption of your programs, whether it's energy efficiency, weatherization, warranty or otherwise, at a material and scalable level. And it's all done with world-class CSATs and NPS scores. So as we move through a couple of the things, I won't labor on this slide too much, but we do have a utility uh, guide for choosing a concierge program for you and your, and your constituents. Um, just give us a quick chat and we will send uh, anybody who wants a mover's guide sent your way, we will send it your way. Um, next slide. Great. Hey, thanks, folks. And while I'm uh, just about to wrap up, but please keep in mind that we'd love to take your, your questions. I've got just a few more slides and then we'll be done and we'd like to just uh, end the webcast with uh, as much interactivity as we can. If we can't get to your questions uh, in time, and we'll actually stay on over an hour if there are um, enough questions to, uh, to justify doing that. Uh, so uh, hang around with us if you'd like, um, but uh, for any questions that we can't or don't get to, please know that we'll be following up with uh, each of you via email as well. So this is the fun part, and, and in fact, we could go to the next slide, Jenna. We could spend a whole another hour just talking about the innovations of, of the programs that we've been working on. Um, and in fact, we do have a, a, a new webcast coming up on November the 9th uh, that'll solely focus on marketplace uh, uh, technologies and, and ways that you can really take your existing marketplace to a much higher level, or if you don't have one, why you really should consider marketplaces as a whole. Uh, so this was actually a Chartwell slide going back to uh, last year at um, uh, Emacs in New Orleans, if, uh, if you'll remember that, for any of those that were attending. And I would dare say that now at least 35% of all utilities um, have a marketplace of some sort or the other. The problem is, uh, is that 
and many of you are uh, uh, that you of uh, the utilities listed are actually on today's call. Um, I think the biggest challenge with marketplaces that we've learned because marketplaces came out of nowhere just several years ago, and certainly they're, they're clearly their success has been phenomenal. The problem is is that most marketplace sites are very um, agnostic, if you will. It's a certain set of uh, products or services, and what you see is what you get. And that, to me, and, and based on our, our you know our efforts, our research, really is not the right path to take. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. So we've talked about conventional warranties, uh, you know, appliances and HVAC maintenance and repair and, uh, you know, electrical issues, et cetera, throughout the house. And, and those are wonderful programs. I've, I've shown you that they typically will have a 26.5% adoption rate, uh, more if you'll let us kind of help you through that process. But yeah, what's the old saying? Different strokes for different folks. Not everybody is in the need or, or would want uh, a home warranty program. Uh, for those that just bought a brand new house, maybe not as applicable. For those that are in a, in a renting environment, not as applicable. But we contend that there are a variety of other products and services that would really uh, complement what you're doing through your mover services and what you're doing with your conventional warranties that really add additional value. And let's just talk about those uh, very quickly here. Um, so for example, consumer electronics. Um, there are great partnerships out there that we can help you with and some products of our own that would really allow you to provide coverage for consumer electronics. Uh, things like smartphones and tablets and laptop, desktop computers, uh, preventing uh, or, or you know, picking up the tab for an accident or just equipment failure, for example. Built-in virtual surge protection in these programs, and they're very, very reasonably priced, especially compared to the cost of many of these devices today. Um, getting into the smart home and the alarm, uh, not only the equipment sales, but installation and support. Uh, there's some great opportunities there that we would love to talk with you about. Uh, products like technical support, now with so much going on in the house today, the ability to pick up a phone, talk to somebody 24 by 7 on an unlimited basis about anything that plugs into a cellular signal or a Wi-Fi signal, uh, even with um, the remote diagnostics dial in, you know, so that they can detect uh, viruses, etc. Um, if you don't have a teenager in your house, how nice to be able to pick up the phone 24 by 7 and talk to a, a, a technical expert that can help you with all of these interconnected devices throughout your home. Things like generators or uh, home battery storage devices, and we also own a leasing company, so the ability to take what could be a four or five or six thousand dollar expense and and really reduce it to just a, you know pennies on the dollar that could also be added to the utility bill bill. So just trying to find different products and different services that would appeal to not only the warranty based customers but those uh, beyond that as well. And then finally, with things like predictive analytics, something that we're very, very excited about, preventing failures to begin with. So imagine getting a call from a, you know, a, a utility partner stating that Mr. or Mrs. Smith, we're looking at some unusual activity with your HVAC unit right now. In fact, that your, you know, your compressor is cycling almost constantly on at this point. Something's not right. We suspect it's a clogged filter but would like to come take a look at it. And because you're under our warranty program, if anything needs to be repaired or replaced, we'll take care of that for you at no expense. So the ability to predict problems before they occur, I think is really a great place for us to be in. And again, meeting customers where they are at their time of need. So why don't we do this? Jamie, would you, I think you've got a couple of takeaways. Why don't you close this up? And again, folks, be thinking about your questions. Get those into the uh, chat box. And if we don't get to them in time, we'll be glad to follow up via email. Jamie? Thanks, Rob. Um, and also thanks, Dennis and Jenna. This has been great. Um, so in conclusion, now let me start, you know, go back to the beginning. So CSAT is not customer loyalty. And what do I mean by that? CSAT is basically, again, uh, taking the temperature of that customer at a point in time. Customer loyalty is really, again, uh, focusing on a long-term value kind of creation relationship um, and really developing stickiness, meaning that they're going to stay with you um, because of that loyalty. Um, so the question becomes, you know, what, what's it, what's going to take? Well, I think you heard a good example of where it starts, um, again, is developing the right relationship. Um, behind the meter programs um, drive both revenue and customer satisfaction. 
um, you know, again, you don't have to reinvent the wheel here. Uh, there's a lot of a good experience. There's, you know, again, as, as both Updater and uh, American Water Homeowner Services pointed to, I mean, there's already revenue being generated in this space. Uh, so highly effective. Um, your, your customers, quite frankly, are already there. They're thinking more about holistically about their home. As Rob mentioned, um, you know, their home's more than just a home these days. You know, literally it's their office space. Uh, in, in some cases with elderly folks, um, it's where they get their care. Uh, so it's a care facility and, and so on. Um, so they're going to expect more uh, from from the brands that they associate themselves with. Um, I think American Water and Updater have both shown that they are innovative companies. Um, so I was, I was pleased to, to be able to present with these folks. Um, and let me conclude again. It's... We are in a per period of accelerated customer transformation. So when we talk about industry transformation and we talk about all these big concepts around uh, resiliency and renewable energy and clean energy and, and so on, um, there absolutely has to be uh, a focus on customer transformation for that to be successful. So um, with that, um, why don't we, Jenna, why don't we open it up for questions? Great. Thanks, everyone. We really appreciate you taking the time. We have plenty of time for questions, and we have a few that came in here. Been monitoring the chat as we go. Um, Jamie, one came in for you at the beginning uh, that actually really ties nicely to what you were just talking about in terms of customer transformation. What do you think is the biggest barrier in the utility sector in regard to customer transformation? Well, I think up to this point, it's a, it's really a, a it's culture. Um, and what I mean by that is that um, you've had a, a very proud history of utility executives looking to um, electrify uh, the nation and, and really build big, powerful uh, systems and, and power plants and so on, um, and really have not really focused on customer as a key part of their uh, overall uh, corporate strategy. Well, that has to change. And in order for that to change, uh, the people inside uh, utilities need to be open to new ideas and new ways of doing things uh, with a focus on customer. So again, I, I think it is changing. Um, I think quite frankly, um, some of the pain that we're gonna be going through around COVID um, and its impacts on debt um, are gonna force changes. So, um, but again, I, I, the people within utilities need to be on board, especially the executives. Right, absolutely. Change comes from the top. Um, Rob, we have a question for you, putting you on the hot seat here. Uh, typical, what does a typical implementation timeline look like for a warranty program? Sure, great question, Jenna, thanks. Uh, I mean, real quickly, folks, uh, high level, uh, you know, for some of the more digital, uh, virtual type products, it uh, could be as uh, short as three to four weeks. If we're talking about, you know, some of the more advanced products that require, uh, you know, a fleet of service uh, companies in your local community, uh, and billing integration and CRM integration, if we're doing call handling, that could be as, as, as many as four to five months. So just depends, but, you know, these programs are easy to, uh, to kind of uh, do a face implementation sort of a crawl walk run so you know starting with some simple products and then uh, moving more towards uh, more of the complex uh, products and integrations thanks great thanks um, Dennis I'm, I'm spreading the love around here some questions <laughs> for you um, with the mover concierge program can you support the adoption of the utilities own programs or your or just your own providers Oh, that's a good question uh, and, and can be a, a common practice in the space. But, you know, as we mentioned earlier, I think it, actually, Jen, I think it was you that mentioned it. You know, every move is a snowflake. Um, so every move is different. Likewise, every utility and marketplace is different. It creates different marketplace needs and whatnot. So absolutely, depending on what the, what the um, constituents of the individual utilities marketplace are trying to accomplish, we will adopt and, and uh, develop a program that's consistent with those needs up to and including advancing um, utility programs and services. Okay, great. We also received uh, a few questions that sound like they could be from the same person here. I'm gonna read two of them and I, I'm gonna ask all three of you uh, to tackle this one. I think they're more uh, suggestions for the industry. So the first one is, 
would the utility industry consider to build the utility companies as a Costco, perhaps, for coming home services? And the second one is, um, you know, could the utility industry consider to update itself to be more like a managed service provider with a much broader spectrum of services than just electricity and natural gas? Do you guys have any thought on, um, you know, if the industry is moving in this in this direction, and and um, and if so, you know, what are how how is it going? Jamie, I think that one's got your name written all over it. My <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I've I've long thought, uh, you know, we need to move away from a commodity-focused industry. Um, quite frankly, we need to move to a service contract or service-oriented, um, which include and, and I would love to see the commodity piece of this just go away, um, because quite frankly, from a customer perspective, a KWH has no real value uh, to to them. Um, what does have value, though, are, uh, you know, again things that we talked about. I mean, it's it's an integrated package of services uh, that is focused on convenience, you know, taking away uh, all this, you know, concern and frustration over, over these services and including, you know, what happens when they break and so on. Um, so I think we're on that way. Um, you know, I think, again, to achieve that objective, the utilities need to really kind of, when they think about big picture, what their strategy is, um, you know, really what those vendor partnerships look like. Um, you know, to, to Dennis's point, I, I think there's an opportunity and a need here to really kind of rethink that model to really truly become partners um, rather than, a, you know, this utility vendor relationship that's existed for a long time. Yeah. Um, so again, I, I think there's a lot there. Dennis, yeah, you want to say something? Yeah, sure, Jamie. I, I, let me just build off that, right? I think you're spot on. And, and really, everybody talks about the economy being a we were switching from a product economy to a, to a service economy. And really, I would argue we're moving from a service economy to an experience economy, right? Consumers are much more sophisticated today, and they expect a certain experience when they engage with you. Uh, you know, certainly Uber is the example of it, but that expectation is now on utilities. So we have to meet the customer where they want to engage with you. And I think that's an important part of solutioning with any program you're going to adopt uh, within, the, within the utility space. Yeah, and I think that's a great point, Dennis. And it's, it's you know important to point out. And I think we all know this. We're kind of preaching to the choir, but you know your our utility customers, your your end users are not comparing you with other utilities. They're comparing you with Uber and you know pizza delivery and uh, you know all of the Amazon type experiences. You know if I can pay for my pizza via my app or or you know watch it in turn by turn directions, why can't I can't why can't I do that with my utilities? So I think it's important to know that you know our our Consumers are getting much more, uh, far more intelligent, and and you know they're they're they have higher expectations than ever before. Jenna, I know it looks like we're over the hour. I know we still got a lot of folks on uh, uh, on the webcast with us. You know, one thing I'd love to just point out is that you know for any of those that would like to do a deeper dive into any of these products, of, you know, coming from uh, Jamie's organization DEFG, coming from Updater or American Water Homeowner Services, uh, please reach out to us. You have our email addresses here. We would love to follow up, and we can do a deeper dive and really get into more particulars um, specific to your unique utility and, and your environment. So so please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, Dennis, would you like to close this out? Well, fair enough, Rob. Thanks for putting me on the spot there. Absolutely. I <laughs> really would, would, uh, would love to, like to thank Energy Central and, and DEFG and others uh, as we were able to sort of give you these this content uh, in a very seamless and smooth way. Wonderful. Well, with that, uh, uh, we will bid you all adieu. I pr uh, hope that you and your families are safe and healthy. And once again, thank you all for joining us today. And uh, as Dennis said, thanks to Energy Central for hosting us. We really appreciate it. Um, have a great day, folks. Everybody stay healthy. Cheers. <laughs>